honestly. Do you want to know the truth? Do you know who sent me the clip that you did? Do you know who actually sent it to me personally? Saka over Rodri. Arsenal I, fans. As an Arsenal you fan. You think Saka's better? I think, I think Saka made fun this season. Don't it say the name. Rio. He put it in the no group. No way! Was, yeah. It was your goat. They're still trying to get the answers from me because of your video. Great content. You never know who's watching, mate. What's up, guys? I have the honor, the privilege to talk to my boy, Joel Bea. He is the founder of Cheeky Sport, a big platform that provides fan opinion and original sports content. Joel is now a regular presenter for a lot of big companies. I'm talking Lab Bible, BBC, Arsenal, Nike. The way I found out about him and how I've been following him for a while is through the podcast 5UK. Uh, over there, they got my boy, Stefan Housen. That's my fellow United fan. And they got my GOAT center back, Rio Ferdinand. And I got to say, Joel, insane that now... Rio Ferdinand heard my name when you shout me out. Shout out to a guy called Matty Farias. He's a Brazilian content creator. Uh, we've actually been talking in the DMs regarding the Rodrigo and, and Saka debate that we had. Obviously, we had Pereira on the show. Can't believe it because that's my ghost center back. I appreciate that. And most of you guys know him from the, from the video I posted about the Saka-Rodrigo debate. We're going to get into that. But uh, I want Joel just to introduce himself a little bit. Joel, thank you so much for coming, man. What's going on, Matty, man? Listen, honestly, do you want to know the truth? Do you know who sent me uh, the clip that you did? Do you know who actually sent it to me personally? Don't it say the name. Rio. He put it in the no group. No way! Was, yeah, it was your goat. Any opportunity to roast me, he was like, ah, oh, I'm throwing that in there. And I looked oh. at that and I was just like, but this this isn't fair though. I have a I have a I have an explanation for this. But uh, Rio didn't want to hear it. He said, "Joel, I don't care. This is what's going on around the internet." And uh, now, nah, to be fair, that's why it was. It, I actually found it hilarious. That's why I DM'd you and I said, yeah. "Matty, I can explain." You know, and it's been going on for days. We spoke about it on Bible Five. That's mine, Stephen Housen, Rio Ferdinand's uh, podcast uh, on Rio's channel five. And even today, I don't know if you've seen, I've had Youngin, the rapper he was in, Anton Ferdinand, who played for West Ham. I saw the stories, Real I saw the IG stories. Abby Flex. They're yeah. still trying to get they're still trying to get the answers from me because of your video. Um, so yeah, great content. You never know who's watching, Matty. You never know who's exactly. watching. Exactly. Exactly. Always gotta be on your toes. Now listen, Joel, before we get into that. Really cool your background, I guess. Um, I've seen you see a couple of times in a couple of interviews how you went to university, you did your thing, but eventually you followed your passion for footy creation. Gonna be honest, I'm on a very trying to follow a very similar step. Still got the corporate job. This is a side hustle, hopefully becoming a main hustle one day. It will. I want to just learn how'd you go from that whatever you studied in university to you know what I want to follow my passion and do this. Well, I, I did economics and banking at university, so it's uh, University of Portsmouth. Uh, it's on the south coast of uh, England. And um, mm. I'll be honest with you, bro. I always knew I wanted to do something for myself, if I'm to be real. For me, I have I've been blessed to have see friends do really well, you know, not just to name drop because of who they are. But for example, Stormzy, who's like a big musician, like I remember seeing him like, because my best friend, like, works with him at Murky and uh, Murky Records. And I remember seeing him just progressing, progressing, progressing. And, and it kind of makes you believe that, yo, we're in a, an internet era where anything can happen. Look, you, you could be dissing me one week and then the next week I'm on your show. Do you know what I'm saying? For sure. Like, For you, sure. You, 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 it just makes you believe that, man, nothing, there's nothing that's crazy, too crazy. You know, like. You can be so that's why it's always important to have great vibes because you literally, bro, you'll be you'll be surprised at the people that watch your content. You've been doing this for two years, but you know you'll have this clip that'll go viral. The consistency that you have, and next thing you know, you collaborate with people, bro. Like I just knew that I wanted to be involved in football, and when I started seeing the Twitter era, and you know, I made my company Cheeky Sports so that you know I could I could have my debates heard by the likes of Ian Wright and Rio Ferdinand. That was actually my goal, you know, when I first started the company. And I'm never shy of saying that because I, I, I say it because I want it to bring hope to people. Do you see what I mean? For sure. Um, because yeah, we all, I used to work in a pharmaceutical company. I used to work for AstraZeneca before they started doing the um, the jabs. So, um, you know, I was just there like loving my, my, I did love it, living my life. God, then I just knew, man, let me try this content creation thing. And I was more yeah. based on going outside than doing the stuff inside, you know. Um, but, but I'm going to start doing a lot of stuff 
inside as well. So for sure. Now let me tell you, what was that break? What was that breakthrough? What was that moment where you kind of realized, like, I right, I kind of could take this full on? Was it like an interview you did or like a clip, anything like that that kind of told you, like, yo, I I could go full on with this? You know, um, I didn't know if I could go full on with it or not. I just made the jump. So in Euro 2016, right? I used to do cheeky sport with uh, my friends David, Akeem, and Jermaine, um, and w- and when it came to Euro 2016. I was at work. I had gone back to another company, the first company that I worked for, and they were really good, like a company called Amaral. They were also a pharmaceutical company. And then it just started to become hard to 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 give my attention at work and content creation. I love content creation so much that it was just getting in the way. And and I wasn't giving the best of myself, if I'm honest with you. Uh, I know that smile because I know that's you right now at work. Um, <laughs> So and I'm at lunch right now. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's tough because you're looking at your back, like, you know, you want to give more, but it's tough. And then I saw the opportunity for the Euros and, and, um, there was a guy called Ben Haynes who really enjoyed our content. He does a lot of, um, Spurs content now as well. A uh, good guy. And then, um, you know, he, we went with a company called 90 Min and I kid you not, we were creating our own content and doing stuff over there. And, you know, we did what we had to do over there. And then I remember thinking to myself, you know what, bro, when I come back, I'm just going to, I'm going to keep trying. And then, you know, I did it all, man. I'd moved back home, uh, you know, just to prolong and do what it is that I'm doing for a longer period of time, you know? And then, you know, I don't hide, you know, I'm a man of faith. I I thank God. Um, I'm a Christian. So I, I remember just praying like for like, things to go well and just working really hard by the way i'm just i wasn't just there like not working i was working my right. bollocks off bro like exactly. every single day i learned how to edit i learned how to you know when people reject you i'll move on straight away and then and then there was some after the world cup you know there were some gigs that fell through and then it ties you on and then you carry on doing the stuff on weekends and it ties you on and then just consistency bro I was just like really, really, really consistent, tr- always trying to have good attitude. And me and my friends, we were just trying. We we're just trying our best, man, our absolute best. And, and you know, uh, God provided, bro. Like, it's as simple always. as, you know. He always does, bro. And that's a, yeah. that's a great point you bring up, right? Like following the basic principles. Sometimes people want to pray for stuff and not put in the work, yeah. right? And as yeah. a you know, man of faith myself, I totally get that. You got to do yeah. your part for God to do his yeah. part, right? So yeah. totally get that. Bro. Before you move and on, I, I, I did. I would always tithe as well, no matter how little I had. I always tithe my, my as well, and I feel like every time like people might go, "Oh, this tithing thing, what's it about?" Don't give your money to a place where you know they're gonna steal it from you, hundred mm-hmm. percent. If you have a place where you can trust and whatever, look up what tithing is. Uh, I've never missed a tithe since two thousand and fourteen, since I started taking it seriously. It's been ten years. I've never missed one. You know, that's a that's a principle my dad put in my head for sure. Since I started getting income, always tithe. It's just putting principle, right? He puts us first. So Come might on. as well put him first, you know? Come on now. And where you put your money tells you where your heart's at too, right? So that's the one. That's definitely true, man, for mm-hmm. sure. Awesome. I know we're on time. So quick question. I seen you interview insane to me. You interview legends, man. You interview Kaka. You interview Henri. You interview the likes of Rashford and Lingard. Who was the best person you interviewed, the most fun? Who was one interview that you'd be like, all right, I'm going to remember that one forever? Ooh, Kevin Prince Boateng. Who, really? Yeah, and I said that easy because that has to be one of the most incredible interviews that I've ever been in and and been a part of. Uh, It's on Rio's 5 YouTube channel. Um, The guy's insane, man. He's so wild. He is is who he was as a player. You know, Mm -hmm. one week you get this guy, the next you're going to get that guy. (laughs) Bro, I'll keep it real with you, right? After that interview, we would speak all the time. Then he'll vanish. Then he'll come back. Then he'll, he's vanished now. But I kind of like know what he was as a player. So I'm kind of like, hey, man, when he's ready to, to hit me up, he's going to hit me up, right? Um, yeah. And he's a big believer as well. So it's it's he just has stories. You forget that he's played with everyone. Messi, Seedorf, Perlo, you know, like Ronaldinho. Yeah, like he, his stories are insane. Like he's got the highs, the lows, the just, you know, Ghana getting kicked out the World Cup squad. Like it. Bro, like, I had chills doing that interview. And I've interviewed a lot of people, bro, over the right. years. You know, like, I've, I've had the chance to interview Tony Cruz. I've had the chance to interview Rashford. I've had the chance to interview... Rio is always really good. Even though I do um, the interviews regularly with Rio, he's really good when it comes to, like, interviewing. Great stories, man. Like, yeah. insane. 
So uh, yeah, there's loads, loads. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great that's a great answer though. And I actually I missed that. When was that posted? If you don't mind me asking. Bro, bro, when it was posted in October, but just type in like Prince Boateng five. Yeah. Bro, okay. you have to promise me, right? You have to promise me that if you get the chance over the next couple of days, bro, you have to watch that in full. Get popcorn out, like put it on your screen. Don't watch it when you're doing something. Don't tell okay. me you watched it in bits. I only gotcha. want to hear from you when you've watched that in full. Okay. And then we can okay. talk again. Sure. Promise? I'll let you know. And if it's... Go ahead. Go ahead. That's it. You promise? I, prom I promise. I promise on that. And if it's, you know, I'll put... If it's good as well, I'll, I'll post some clips as well reacting to it later on. But definitely, I want to sit down and watch that full on for sure. That's my guy. For sure. All right. Cool. So, real quickly, you're an Ar Arsenal fan. I forgot to mention that as well. Big Arsenal fan. Listen, big W yesterday. I'm going to be honest. I was expecting the W, but five is insane. That's insane. That's insane. Uh, number one, were you expecting that result, that result yesterday? I don't think much people were. Number two, how you feel about winning the league now? Bro, that result, that dub yesterday, yeah, that big dub yesterday meant a lot because, first of all, it's been 10 years. Uh, just just over 10 years, 13 months, 10, like, no, 10 years and a month since Chelsea beat us 6-0. And I remember that day, That's man. True, it yeah. was a cold yeah. day, man. Like, Sherla doing what he was doing, Hazard on the score sheet. Bro, it was, we got pumped, bro. Fist pumped all day long. And I thought to myself, can we get the six? Can we get the six goal to equal it? Yeah. But we didn't get it. It's a shame, but... Five-star Arsenal, I didn't see it coming if you want me to answer your question, like, in short. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's given us proper um, confidence now and the players as well to go to White Hart Lane and get the result we need. Now, we've got to give them the quick <laughs> slappage. You know? Yeah, yeah. For sure. I mean, look, looking at the last couple of games for each squad, you would think that Arsenal probably has the biggest tasks. Um, but look, it's football. Anything could happen. Literally, all we need to happen, I'm saying we because I don't want Man City or Liverpool to win a title. So, as a United mm -hmm. fan myself, all we need to—I'm I'm, gonna say we—is you know them drop points somewhere. Um, how do you, how would you say in a confidence level one through ten that you guys can get the win and that Man City will choke up a point? I think I think we've been playing the best football in the whole league, and I think not a lot of people mm -hmm. will argue that. I think we've been better than Man City. We've been better than Liverpool. Obviously, if you win the league, okay, you can say fair enough. That team deserves to win the league. But bro, I'll be honest, man. Since especially since the turn of the year. Bro, our results have been incredible, you know. And that's why it's a big shout-out to Villa, who did the, the double over us. You know, Fulham, who got the result against us earlier in the year. Oh, that was silly. Like, silly game to lose. And West, and West Ham as well. You know, you look at yeah. those games and you go, ah, mama, it could really make a difference with team, whether we win or not. But I am confident that we can win the rest of our games because of what I saw yesterday. Prior to this, I thought, mm, I don't know. But the convincing style at which we've played, the convincing win, the, the fans behind us, it's what we need to propel us for the remainder of the sure. fixtures that we have. For sure. Absolutely. And kind of to transition from there, um, Arsenal is looking good. I want to know your perspective, especially when it comes to fans backing. As an Arsenal fan, right, what is your perspective? Or someone, in, I guess, not neutral in this position, but what's your idea or your perspective on what's going on with United right now? What do you think needs to happen first? Manager, players, whole organization. What do you think needs to be changed priority for success to happen? It's got to start from the top, B. It's got to start from the top, man. You know, you have to clean your house. You've got to make sure your house is clean, you know. You can't be bringing things in your house, bringing out, and you haven't cleaned up what's already inside the house. <laughs> yeah, it's as simple yeah. as. And, um, and yeah, I think leadership starts from the top, bro. It's as simple as. You can't expect the players to kind of like, fall in line and do what they need to do and perform well, you know, off the pitch needs to be better. The recruitment has been shambolic over the last 10 years. Don't even get me started, you know I mean? man. Like, the, the recruitment, you guys have, and and it's it's not just the recruitment, it's the whole setup of the place because you've had some good players, man. You've had the Falcaos come in, you've had the Di Marias come in. They've all done bad, you know? If I was to look Sanchez. at... Sanchez is a big one too. Yeah, Sanchez, bro, big money signings that haven't really given, like, I don't think you got the best out of one matter, even though he's someone yep. that's liked. You know, if I look at your most, Pogba, you know, Jose Mourinho, the great man himself, bro, it's been a shambles for the last 10 years. I think, like, your best signings are, like, are probably, like, 
and a Herrera, you know, maybe mm. Bruno Fernandez. Um, yep. they, they, those are your like best signings, if I'm to be yep. honest with you. Um, yep. I can't really, there's not a lot that I've shunned. Who knows? Maybe a daily, daily blend maybe is, goes into that category where they've been okay signings. Bro, how many good signings yeah. have you had? No, and, and that's one I guess of the question too. How many of these signings, for example, for Ten Hag, he had a couple that he wanted. The, the most prominent one that we will always talk about is Anthony. What do you think is the fact that, yeah, he don't get the players that he don't want he wants, but there was players that he got that he wanted. Do you put the blame on Ten Hag or do you blame it on the players just not adapting to the league? Yeah, I, I, I do put a lot of it. When you look at Anthony, I think what's made it a bit funny with Anthony is his attitude. Um, mm. And for someone who was out for a few games for something very serious, right, with the domestic abuse, Bro, you need to be very thankful that you're still playing football. Because not saying whether he did it or not, that's not for me to judge. I wasn't there. I don't know the ins and outs. Right. But what I'm saying is, is when you've gone through something like that, you should be like, right, I want to focus on my football and I want to focus on showing that I'm worth the 90 million price tag that they paid for me. You know? What's your thoughts on this? Come on, bro. Like, come on, bro. Like, you you have to be, you have to remember like that. Look, if, if for example... What am I trying to say here? It's an embarrassment, bro. Like, you have to remember that, first and foremost, it's an embarrassment. And you have to be respectful to the opposition because they did really well, man. They're a championship yeah. side, you know, and it's not like they're top of the championship either. Do you see what I mean? Like, they're kind of, was it eight, nine? Something, somewhere down there. And they pulled out a performance and they showed respect and they they probably should have not won. You know, if you're looking... You were there, right? You were there? Yeah. So for you to turn around, start cupping them and doing this and doing that, I just kind of think his attitude, and I'm hearing a few things like, you know, he's he's not gotten well with Ten Hag and he's walked out of training. I don't know how true that is, so I don't want right. to, you know, say it to 100%, but I'm not hearing good things attitude-wise. And that's what and worries me. Yeah, that's a big issue in my opinion as well. I mean... There's also people trying to back him in terms of like they were talking trash too or he doesn't even know where Coventry even sits in the table. But I agree regardless. If you put a result like that, you know, the difference between celebrating with Hoyland and the difference between going like this to them, you know. So don't t totally get it. Um, yeah. Quickly, I know we're on time as well. Let's get to the debate really quickly. I want the people to see what you thought. You came up with the idea or the debate that Saka over Rodrigo. Now, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I want you to tell me what you mean by that. And also, yeah, what's your perspective on the whole thing? Because what you should have done is you should have comments. You should have played your piece first. Because now you don't want to put words in my mouth. You should have played your piece first. The clip that went viral. I'll put it. I'll put it. If I clip this, if, if I clip this, I'll put that piece first. I'll put it. I'll put that All piece right, first. Cool. Saka over Rodri. Arsenal I, fans. As an Arsenal you fan, think Saka's better. I think I think Saka. Maybe not this season. I think look at Pereira's season. face. Oh. Under that is like what? <laughs> if you look at Saka, his experience. Experience, experience, experience. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, stats. Stats. When his team needs it most yesterday, he has zero goals, zero assists, zero total shots, zero chances created, 25% successful dribbles, and 0% accurate crosses. He literally ghosts every time in crunch time of the season. Meanwhile, Rodrigo is scoring versus Man City, and don't even get me started on his Champions League stats. Let's keep going. Play that internationally high level, obviously. International. He's a killer. I think Rodrigo's just about really becoming a starter now. Just becoming a star. This guy's bugging. This season properly. Your is <laughs> he said your opinion is different. That's the nicest way to say you are bugging, bro. You know what? For me, it was um. Look, we, me and Rio. I'll give you some background story in our group chat. We were having debates, and at one point the Saka versus Rodrigo thing kind of like, it was in passing. It, it kind of like just got dropped in there. And yeah. I don't know, maybe he was busy. Maybe I was, I don't know. But it, I did drop it in there once. And I think we had like a light debate on it. And, and Rio was like, he rates Saka. He really does. But he thinks Rodrigo's better or whatever. And then I think even in the group chat, just like I said, even though it was quiet when I spoke to Pereira, I did say, look, this season... There's no competition, hands down. Well, I didn't say it in that much. But I did basically say okay. Rodrigo's back. And mm -hmm. um, Pereira was looking at me, man. And he was just looking at me like, like, Saka? Rodrigo? That, basically, my Brazilian teammate? He was like, and Rio went, I could see Rio 
looking at me with the corner of, I don't know if it was this eye or this eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Was, he was looking at me like, you want to be careful where you go. And even Stephen Housen, who Stephen Housen is crazy. You know what he's like? He says what he wants. He was looking at me thinking, where on earth are you going with this? Because you're going down the woods with this one, bro. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, nah, like, what I'm trying to say is that this season you can see it, but is it really that crazy to say, even if you don't agree, my whole thing is, I don't know if Rodrigo could have done for Arsenal what Saka's done for Arsenal, because I feel like Saka has really put, he's put teams on his back. I generally think Saka has got the capabilities of doing what Rodrigo does at Real Madrid. Some people will say, you're crazy, you're wrong. I get that. But if you mm. take it away from this season and you look at the last two and a half years, three years, it's not so crazy. But in football, uh, look, Rio, even though I said this on Vibe with Five and they, 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 they didn't want to hear, but when Rio has said that Foden was world class and he's Saka's in the, you know, Saka's maybe just below, mate, it went crazy. How could you yeah, say that, true. Rio? How could you? But then two months later, Maybe we owe Rio an apology. Yep. And last yep. year, Casemiro was the best thing. Oh, my God. And we were doing our Bible 5 debate. Now, they want Casemiro out of the club. Yeah. Yep. So, football is like... I'm not saying I'm right, you know, because mm-hmm. I can... I, I admit, I do think Rodrigo is better. But it's not as crazy as people will make something feel when you take it in a context of time and you look at the last yeah. two and a half, three years. I totally get you. That's a lot of recency bias too. Perfect example that you used as well. Um, a, another example is Rashford, right? Last year, people were talking Ballon d'Or shouts. They were literally saying Ballon d'Or shouts. Now, everyone's saying, get this player out of my club. Oh. You know, and Ka- Kazemiro was a great one too. I was having this debate with my group chat. Same thing. Last year, he won player of the year, best CDM in the world. He changed United. He's, the, he's going to be the, the rock for next year. Now, people will tell him, go to Saudi. So, I agree with you. I get it. Last year, if you told me, now that I understand that perspective, if you told me last year, Saka is better than Rodrigo, I would say, okay. I yeah, see you, you're and from. you might not agree. You might still right. think, nah, nah, I'm not buying it. But yeah, if you're looking at, and I liked what you did there with the England thing and you added Mr. Penny, I thought, ah, that was funny. But if you see, look how we played in the World Cup and, you know, look, you got to remember who he plays with in that midfield. He plays with Foden. He plays with Bellingham. He plays with, do you know what I mean, Rice. He plays with like some really good players. So, but who's been England's best player in the last two years? Like literally, like England, England best England player. He's got the award twice. He got it again this year. Mm-hmm. You know, like it. I think this season, if I'm to be honest with Saka, I don't think it's been his best performances. I think it's his right. best uh, goals and um, assist season. But bro, he's been missing too many times to the point where, you know, it's it's. You can't put him in that conversation at the current moment. Exactly. It's the truth. Yeah. No, I agree with you. Okay. So especially with that perspective in terms of, of, of the time, I I, I, to- I totally get that. I think today, if you could agree with me on that, today, given both their careers until now, who would you pick up first for a squad? You would agree, Rodrigo. A hundred percent, bro. Like, okay. like hundred percent. Like for me, out of all your players, I'm, I'm talking Real Madrid, by the way, mm-hmm. out of all the Madrid players, I thought, out of all the youngsters, I thought, and don't get me wrong, Madrid got the best, like, their youngsters' levels are high. But if you look at the Churamenis and you look at the, like, I say Vinny, obviously Vinny's been there for a while and blah, blah, right. Like, you look at all these players, like, I just thought, out of all of them, no disrespect at all, because he's obviously, it shows the level of Real Madrid, but I just thought he's the one that maybe they might move on. You know, out right. of all of them, and I thought, oh, you know, you got Mbappe coming. They, they might want to want this player if they get Trent. I don't know. I always thought, mm. but this season he's been like, whoa, okay, like this guy's here to stay, and and right. and and I can see his attitude a little bit more come out. Prior to that, I was seeing clips last year when he will say something crazy, fans will be like, what have you done to deserve to be a part of it? All of a sudden, ah, football, man. It is. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. It's a lot of it's a lot of recency, but for sure. Uh let's end it off with this. Uh UCL predictions. Just want to hear it really quickly. UCL predictions, man. I, I can't see anyone beating Real Madrid, man. I feel like it's their trophy. We still got I don't think Bayern's as strong as you know anyone. I think they they, they go past Bayern. Um I think you know, you you've obviously got your PSGs left in it. You got Dortmund still in it. You got like I I I can't see anyone 
stopping Real Madrid now. I think the heritage is theirs. I feel like they've beaten the best team, you know. Mm. And I, I don't, I don't even think Real Madrid are anywhere near as good as City. But that Champions League competition is theirs, man. So That's I'll be good. surprised if anyone takes it off them or Carlo, Don Carlo, Ancelotti. Yeah, man. That team is, like you said, you can never count them out, ever. I mean, even if they're not dominating a game like we saw versus City, they're always in the game because, like you said, it's their tournament. I made a shout early, group stages. I said, I have a feeling that PSG is going to win it and Mbappe is going to get it for PSG before he dips. It's been going really well right now. Um, and it would be amazing to see him beat Real Madrid it's in true. the final and then go there. And then so go join him. I, yeah, and then you'll join them. So that's like all, that's, that's better than joining a winning team. You know, it's like you beat the team and then you join them. Um, and listen, I get it. Real Madrid might be better in, ter- in terms of like paper in their tournament, but it's a final. Anything could happen. And we also saw how Mbappe performs in finals. He could turn up. So we'll see yeah. what happens, man. It's true. It's true. What, what else? Happens. What else you got awesome. for me? That's all I got. I want to let you go. Um, you, you told me to, to give you a uh, hold, hold your promise to go watch that video with Prince. I will go do that. I got a promise for you, though. If you could please just do this one thing for me, send me a message. One, one video or one game that my dad showed me and that I watched growing up was um, R9, uh, Ronaldo Phenomenus, hat trick at Old Trafford, right? And that was in the 2002 2003 Champions League campaign versus Man United, Incredible. right? Yeah. Um, Ferdinand was playing. <laughs> My question to you is, if you could just please pass on this question. I just want to know, since Sir Alex Ferguson is my GOAT manager, and there's a bunch of managers that talk about they didn't know how to guard R9 at all, I just want to know if there was a game plan to stop him. If you could just pass along that question. Do me a favor. What I'll do, clip up this bit, send it to me, right? And then I'll play this version via WhatsApp to Rio. And, and he's really good because he loves talking football and stuff like that. So okay. you can, if, if there was a on, if there was a plan to stop R9, that's a really good question. So just clip yep. it up. I'll send it to him and then you guys can get the response on your channel. So Sounds good. Awesome. Awesome. Make awesome. Sure well, Joel, you, thank you, you credit, so much, bro. So I was going to say, make sure you credit five and obviously myself. Oh, for sure. 100%. Hundred percent. Go follow Joel as well. Great content creator. He's always at the games. He's always doing the good interviews. Awesome man as well, bro. So yo, really appreciate you, Joel. And uh, yeah, I'll be uploading this, and we'll talk soon, bro. Thank you, Matty. Good luck.